I came across uh, this one while I was shopping for something else and uh, it decided to come home with me. Now of course it was in pretty bad shape uh, from a cosmetic condition perspective. It took two days for me to clean it up and uh, bring it back into a condition where I can work on it. Um, thankfully everything is intact, all the knobs are there. Let's see if it's going to come back to life. So this is a hybrid unit. When I say hybrid, it contains a couple of tubes, not the big ones, but newsters. So what I'm going to do now is to try and uh, power it up. Since it's not a completely vintage unit, you know, it's not going to hurt if I just try to power it on directly. But still, I'll go through a variac. Um, from a spec perspective, this is a dual trace 15 megahertz oscilloscope. It's not a huge uh, oscilloscope. It's really compact and small. That's a comparison with a 211. Another view to show you the physical size of 422 compared to a 211. The design of this uh, scope is a bit interesting. They've designed it as two units. You know, this is the power supply unit and this is the indicator unit. Very similar to what you've seen in triple uh, five. So this power supply unit is the AC power supply unit, but they have other options like DC, mix it AC, DC. So let's try powering this up. I'm still gonna use a Variac just to make sure that you know nothing blows up. I've already tested the fuse and the fuse is good. Pre-power up checklist, intensity, minimum focus, STIG, scale illumination, everything to minimum or counterclockwise. Passage on. Horizontal sweep maybe at 0.5 millisecond. All the position controls in the mid position. I put it into auto trigger and let's spot it up. Okay, I've given about 95 volts. Let me increase the intensity. Mm -hmm. Let's see if scale illumination is working. Oh yeah, it is. Let me cut the light so that you can see scale illumination is at least working. But otherwise, the unit is dead. Okay, so this is coming on. The uncal indicators are coming up, but no trace. It's dead. Let's get started. For you, you can check out the power supply unit by removing these four screws. That's how both of them look side by side. The connector is used for transferring power from the power supply unit back into the indicator unit. That plastic thingy, what you see there, is used for uh, turning on the power switch on the power supply unit. That's a mechanical link from the front panel power switch. That's a connector and the control or the, the mechanical actuator for the power switch. This is the actual power switch in the power supply module and that's a connector on the power supply side. Oh, I can already see something. It's a capacitor which is probably suffering a little bit of uh, overheat or maybe bad, I'm not sure. So this is the power supply. Let's get started with this. Like triple five, you cannot power on the power supply unit just by itself because they have a interlock jumper on the indicator unit which feeds the main power through the indicator unit and returns it back to the power supply uh, just to make sure you cannot turn on the power supply without a load. You know, we can bypass it. So let's open this guy up. There are a bunch of uh, mounting screws. There are two screws over here. There are four screws at the back as well. So I'm gonna remove all the screws and uh, pull the PCB out. Hopefully, yes, it's out. Now we can see the main transformer, filter capacitors, filter capacitors. Here you can see the transformer, power switch, fuse, more capacitors, thermal cutout, so let's start with the basics. Um, I'm gonna test the transformer, the diodes. I'm gonna replace that capacitor. So I'm gonna test these guys for uh, their value and uh, ESR just to confirm they're not dead or dry. And then we will proceed to the next step. So I'm done with the basic housekeeping. Uh, tested uh, all the capacitors, uh, their values are good. ESR is within the limits. I've replaced this barbecued capacitor right over here. I've tested this capacitor, it is dead. 
Um, it is C689, a 100 microfarad capacitor used as a filter for the high voltage oscillator. Now, that's a little bit suspicious. Um, I'm going to look around the high voltage side just to confirm that everything is all right there. The way the high voltage section works is a little bit interesting in this oscilloscope. The high voltage transformer is in the indicator unit, whereas the multivibrator which drives that transformer primary is in the power supply unit. Yeah, otherwise things seems to be good. So these two are the incoming power to the transformer. So I'm gonna bypass the whole AC interlock and power switch and then measure the output on the connector directly. I just wanna see if all the rails are present or not. This is pin number one and uh, this is pin number 24. That's how I'm gonna apply direct AC voltage to the power supply unit, bypassing the AC interlock and the indicator unit. Now, let me warn you, if you're not familiar with electronics or new to electronics, please do not follow because this is dangerous. The connection comes directly here to the isolation transformer and the isolation transformer is connected to the variac. I'm gonna be increasing the voltage, maybe to half of what is expected to start with. Then I'll go full line voltage and um, measure the outputs. Okay, all set. So I'm gonna now measure the voltages uh, on all the output rails directly on the connector. Um, it's a bit tricky. You need to use a pretty sharp uh, probe like this to measure it otherwise you can short circuit the outputs so be careful and i'm not applying full line voltage i'm kind of doing about you know 60 volts so let's measure uh, starting with the plus and minus 12 volts so minus 12 is on pin number seven that's going to be and i have 11.36 this is with 64 volts input so that's fine and then the next one is 11 where i should get minus 110 volt that's right here. I have minus 17, 9. That's okay. There's no load. 19 with plus 12. That should be 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I have 11.3. Then I need to look for pin number 9 for 95 volts. So this is 7, 8, 9. I have 73. So that's also good. This power supply checks out good. I'm gonna put it back into its case. Then we will hook it to the indicator unit and start troubleshooting it on the indicator unit. Now one key thing is, even though this is called as a power supply, this doesn't have all the regulators. The rest of the regulators are inside the indicator unit. Okay, I've put it back together. Now let's get to the indicator unit. There are three screws holding the cover. There's one over here, and two over here. Once you remove that, you can slide the indicator unit cover out. Okay, I've assembled the indicator unit and uh, power supply unit together. Now let's test the voltages from the indicator unit because there is one more set of regulators inside the indicator unit. That's the reason we need to test it at the indicator unit as well for the right uh, power supply voltages. These are the test points which we're gonna test now. There are two voltages which we need to test here, 81 volt, right here and 20 volts right here and I have both of them right up to the spec so here we are from the look of it it looks like there is no high voltage high voltage section is right here this is the underside of the chassis you need to take out these two screws and then pull the high voltage uh, cage out or transformer and multiplier out that's the case or shield for the high voltage unit and this is the actual high voltage unit let me pull it out hopefully there is no high voltage um, this is the transformer that's it so just three pieces the high voltage transformer the voltage multiplier and the high voltage regulator that's about it and you can see the voltage multiplier diodes and capacitors in here okay this is the high voltage regulated tube something like a 5651 or og3 sort of thingy but for high voltage this is a gv4s 1400 which is a 1400 volt voltage regulated tube what i'm going to do first is to see if i can confirm if the oscillator is working if the oscillator is working then they will we will move forward and start testing other points one by one um, it's not a good idea to basically hold this or hold my hands this close to the 
um, HV cable. Now the next step is to check and see if my high voltage oscillator is working. So for that I can directly get into the transformer here and measure the signal on the first pin which is the white and blue wire. So I have my oscilloscope probe here carefully. Let me try to probe that point. And this is a signal. So my HV section is perfectly fine, at least till the primary. Now what we need to look at is the secondary, the voltage multiplier, eventually getting into the CRT section. Let's move on. So naturally the next step is to check for the high voltage. You know, I'm beating around the bush a little bit, but hey, it's just for the fun of it. Let me measure the high voltage. I've disconnected the CRT anode and I'm going to measure the voltage out of uh, the high voltage multiplier. That's my all new most modern high voltage probe my high voltage uh, meter is at 150 volt range with a 100x probe which means full scale is uh, 15000 volts that's the voltage slightly over 5 It's interesting that now I can see the power indicator is on, which is a good sign. Let me increase the intensity and see if I can see something. Nothing yet. Oh yeah, there is something on the screen now. Most likely these pots seems to be dirty. Oh my God, I'm, I don't want to burn my screen. This looks like a bad pot and contacts and switches. I'm going to go ahead and clean all the pots. This is the intensity control port doesn't have any contact below 75% intensity and look at how bad it is like the grease or whatever has dried and you know it's just all over the place so potentially this is the number one issue the scope is having a uh, spray of a contact cleaner won't help in these situations you have to actually open and get inside them so here is a good news that was the culprit that single port unfortunately the intensity control port so that is now behaving properly let me cut the light so that you can see what's going on with the beam there you go and uh, i can reduce it and now i can move it up and down that's for channel two that's for channel one yeah that single port was the one which was uh, driving us nuts that's about it. I'm going to put it back and then we will continue. Okay, everything is put back in place and let's power up. Let me cut the light so that you can kind of see what's happening with the beam. Okay, that's coming up. So I have vertical position control for channel one. I have vertical position control for channel 2 which is good I have horizontal position control which is also good let me switch this back to channel 1 and move the horizontal position okay here you go it's all done it's up and running I've connected a probe let me put the 2 volt calibrator signal and that's it I'm happy with the CRT pretty sharp focus and uh, intensity done let me try the other channel That's about it. So it's all done. Let me do an internal tour of this instrument tomorrow. Well, today it's already four o'clock in the morning. We will wrap up the video with that. On that happy note, let's close this video by looking at the internal organs of this instrument. Photos are posted in TechWiki in case uh, if you like to see them. This is the top side of the instrument with the time base switch and this is the horizontal amplifier. That's a connection to the CRT going out directly. This is the right side of the instrument, time base board or the trigger board so called. So this is the second set of regulators which are inside the indicator unit on the sweep board or the trigger board so called you can find uh, tunnel diodes that's one guy right there 
and there could be a couple more probably the 445 that's another one so that's a trigger board on the bottom side the high voltage cage which we removed earlier and the two input preamplifier boards for both channel there is a preamplifier board which is the alternator plus the front end and you can see the newest here for each channel and finally this is the left side of the instrument which is mainly the vertical uh, amplifier board or the final vertical amplifier in connection to the CRT plate Q254 and 244 vertical output transistors power supply test point and some part of the alternator for uh, channel 1 this is newest in the trigger board as well and on the regulator board there's one more VR tube it's kind of interesting that they used a mix of uh, center diodes and voltage regulator tubes uh, so that's one happy looking scope there let me move all the controls to calibrated position that's it thank you so much for uh, watching and take care Thank you.